David Hahn, David Hahn When they all fallin' short, pass me the baton Can't handle your inquiries, a marathon And can't nobody do a better man than David Hahn all right, guys, my name is David Hahn. Welcome back to the market statistics from May 2023. Uh, it's early June right now, and we're going to be presenting the data from last month to take a look at what the market trends have been doing and try to anticipate where things are going from here. So let's dive right in. Average sale price last month was $375,611. It was a slight decline from the previous month, but we had a huge jump in April. So you can see we jumped all of this in April and we had about a third of it pull back last month. Very, very normal. If you guys watch the stock market, if you have a huge pullback or if you have a huge increase, uh, it's very, very typical for the next day for there to be a little bit of a rebound back the other way. Overall though, you can see the trends are going up in 2023 and we're very, very close to all time highs in average sale price. So uh, if you're waiting for the market crash, you're hoping for prices to reduce, I don't think that's coming for us. Uh, there is a chance still that the Fed continues to push the inflation down, continues to raise rates. If that happens in Q3, Q4, things might change. This could turn around. But for right now, it looks like people have adjusted to rising interest rates and are back in the game. If you look at the last three years, uh, in 2022, 393, 249 in May, 348,000 in May of 2021, and just under 280,000 in May of 2020. So you can see over the last three years, you've got about $100,000 or almost 30%, 25%, something like that, increase in home value sale price since prior to the pandemic. Guys, this has just been a huge run. And the way things are going, I'm not so sure that it's going to stop here. We may continue to run. You have to remember as well, a lot of money was printed in this time here. I think they added 30%, 40%, something like that, a huge amount of money to the money supply. So when you do that, you deflate the dollar, and what was 280,000 here might still be around 380,000 here because there's so much more money in circulation. So when you see this, it's not just the home prices are going up you know, exponentially, it's also that there's more money in the system so people are able to spend more. As far as price per square foot, we are tied with the previous all-time highs, which is crazy. Uh, a price per square foot went up again this last month, and you can see at $225, it lines up right here with our all-time highs from 2022. Uh, so again, you know, if you're hoping prices are going to start reducing, if you're waiting for a crash, you're going to be waiting a while, I think, based on these numbers. Take a look at new listings. This has been our biggest concern going into 2023. As you can see, they just absolutely fell off in the second half of last year. And again, a lot of that's because of rising interest rates. People who own their homes at 2%, 3%, 4% interest, it's very, very hard for them to accept the fact that they're going to sell, buy another home at 6%. So I think that's what's kept sellers out of the game. But as you can see with the new year, we, we've seen a little bit of rebound. Um, again, right now we're still not looking great. We're at 318 from last month. Uh, and typically we'd be quite a bit higher than that. As you can see here, 407, 379, 347. So we're on our way back. We're trending the right direction. And uh, you know, hopefully sellers continue to get in the game as we go into summer because we've got a lot more buyers than sellers right now in the market. And we definitely need the inventory as we will see in a second. If you look at homes for sale, it's dropped off exponentially since the end of 2023. We're at 398 currently in Tulare County for sale right now. That is super, super low. You just saw 318 new listings last month. We barely have more total listings on the market than we saw new listings last month. That is crazy. Looking at pending sales, 282 last month. This has been rebounding. It's on the rise. Again, though, we can only have as many pending sales as we have listings on the market. You know, buyers can't buy it if it's not there. So this is going to continue to be held back a little bit by the amount of inventory that we have. Comparing to the last few years, though, we're not too far off. 282, 313 in 2022. 351 in 2021 and 360 in 2020. These were super active years. You know, I don't know if this is necessarily the norm for the market, um, but if you look at the last three years, we're, we're getting back to where we expect things to be. As far as closed sales, we're right around 235. Kind of the same problem, right? If there's not much inventory in the market, it's a little bit tough for buyers to find something that they want. Uh, comparing the last few months, this is still pretty low. 235 compared to 302, 336, and 290 over the last three years. But hopefully this continues to rise as we get more inventory on the market and buyers are able to find homes that they would love to live in. 
As far as days on the market, we saw that drop off significantly in May. That's been rising since about mid-2022. We're at 38 days on market right now on average. And again, that's because a lot of the homes that are sitting there have been sitting there for a long time. 318 homes come on the market this month and there's only 398 total. That means probably those other 70 have been there a while and, uh, and are skewing this average days on market data. So maybe I should have done a median, uh, median days on market for this one. It might have given us a little bit better, better numbers. But the point here is that buyers are there, buyer activity is there. Um, so we just need the sellers to get in the game. Overall months of supply, as we talked about, just steadily decreasing, continued to do, decrease last month. We're down to 1.6 months of inventory. Uh, typically, your average seller's market would be less than five or six months of inventory. Your typical buyer's market would be more than five or six months of inventory. So as you can see, 1.6 months is incredibly low. It's still considered a seller's market in every way when you look at months, uh, months of inventory, new inventory, and all that. Um, there's more buyers in the game than there are sellers, plain and simple. So it is still a seller's market. In summary, average home sale prices were on the rise in March and really jumped in April, but we lost about 30% of those gains from April to May, uh, but we're still near all-time highs. And when we look at price per square foot, we are at all-time highs at $225 per square foot. We've tied the all-time highs that we saw in 2022. Low inventory is what's keeping real estate investments increasing month over month. But again, I think a lot of it has to do with inflation as well. When there's more money in the system, people are able to spend more for the same items. New listings thankfully climbed again this month, 318 properties, but we still need a whole lot more. Guys, sellers, we need you in the game, but this is a step in the right direction. Pending sales are still increasing as well, suggesting the buyers have adjusted to the new normal for mortgage rates. Homes for sale are extremely low, sitting all the way down at 1.6 months of inventory. And for me, and for most others for the last few months, this has been the biggest concern in the real estate market right now. If we get more inventory, homes are going to continue to move and we're going to get those transactions up. Uh, but right now, we've got a lot of buyers looking and they just can't find anything that fits their needs. In summary, a year ago, buyers were paying tens of thousands above asking price, paying for their own closing costs. Uh, and repairs, paying thousands more to cover a short appraisal, all just to have a chance at buying the home they want. And you know, the last few videos we've done, we've kind of talked about how things are different, but honestly, it's kind of getting back to that. Right now, buyers are still paying above asking price. You're still seeing multiple offers, uh, but we can potentially see seller assistance with closing costs. We've seen that a little bit more lately, and we can also avoid writing appraisal gaps in some cases. I will say the newest listing that I listed had a bunch of offers. We had a stack of them, and the ones that, that were considered were the ones that had big appraisal gaps. So. You know, we're not immune from all this stuff. It's still an incredibly competitive market for buyers. You know, the sellers have all the leverage right now because there's not a whole lot on the market. So again, buyers, be prepared to come hard. Sellers, this is where we're at. We saw home values increase again as we approached. Uh, we, saw, we saw home values. <laughs> sellers, this is where we're at. We saw home values increase again as we approached the end of Q2. And we expected this because spring is normally a hotter market. Summer is usually when things pick up but we actually hit all time highs in price per square foot this month. Now sellers aren't listing their homes right now due to higher interest rates than they're used to, but with home values at all time highs, you should have strong equity in your home regardless of when you bought it. So there's no risk of this big wave of foreclosures or this shocking market crash that people are hoping for, waiting for. Uh, I just don't see it, I don't think it's coming. That said, the Fed is committed to stamping out inflation and even with all the rate hikes they've done in the past, uh, the positive impact has been pretty minimal. We can still see the, uh, the, uh, the cost of things are on the rise, and uh, they may continue to raise rates as we go into Q3. I don't know. Uh, nobody really knows for sure, and that will determine the outlook going forward. In fact, many experts believe the actual recession is coming in Q3 of 2023. Uh, this has been the talk pretty much all year, is that the re real recession is coming. I haven't heard a lot of this talk lately, though. It seems like people are kind of... You know, accepting the fact that this may be, you know, that, that, that may have been it. We may be kind of getting back to normal now. So low inventory is keeping home values increasing as we are seeing multiple offers again. If you're thinking of selling in the next year or two, this may be your best opportunity to do so. We just don't know what the future holds. Things are still very shaky with the Fed. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to see how everything plays out. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today to our newest segment of the Market Report. Uh, I love doing these videos. I love keeping people uh, informed about what's going on in the real estate market. If you guys have any questions, whether it's market specific, real estate specific, if you ever need contractors, anything like that, please feel free to let me know. I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. Uh, my name is David Hahn, and thank you again for watching.